Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. You know, one of the things that I get asked a lot by people is how do you communicate with other people if you're off grid? Uh, we don't. Because that's why we went off grid, is so we, we are, we're anti-social people and we don't communicate with other people. I'm just joking, folks. I'm a really social person. I love to talk to other people. Uh, you know, I, you get to bored, you get lonely. If you're out at your own place all the time, you got to have some socializing. <clears throat> so having a communication system, a system at your off-grid place, is one of the things everybody wants to know about. They want to know, can you get internet? Can you get phone? Can you get television service? You know, radio, any of those sorts of, of communications that all of us use every day, pretty much. Now, some off-griders uh, are, are really quite anti-social people. They don't like to communicate to other people maybe as much as I do. Uh, but it's still a good idea uh, to have some type of communication system on your off-grid places. Uh, for one thing, it's for safety reasons. And, uh, you know, us off-griders, we tend to do things on our own and by ourselves. And a lot of times, it's easy to get hurt. Even if you're an experienced off-gridder, an experienced carpenter and builder, you can get hurt. And I know from first-hand experience because when I was building my cabin, I just got to the, the end of putting on the last few boards, and I got in a rush, was up on a ladder, and the ladder started doing that tippy-tip number, and it tipped right over. I tried to jump off, and my foot caught in it, and I came straight down on my knee, and I blew out my right knee for the third time. Nobody around, no phone at that time. I didn't have a phone on my uh, off-grid place at that time. And so I ended up having to push my leg around, and I scooted myself out on my butt, got myself in my truck, and I drove myself to the emergency room uh, to get it taken care of. And just a few days ago, my brother, who's a very experienced carpenter, got in a rush and cut his finger practically off with a skill saw. These things happen on homesteads all the time. And you need some type of communication because some accidents like that could be deadly if you're not able to get help really fast. And so you either want a phone, you want internet service, or one of the other services that I'm going to talk about here. Now, if you're, when you're first looking for land off-grid, you should really uh, look at the sources of uh, communication that might be available for your area, because not all of them are going to be available in different areas. Now, if you're not too far off-grid, you might be able to get a landline, and that's a, a very common use. Uh, if there are power poles next to your property anywhere, then there's also a landline somewhere there available. And landlines are, are fairly cheap, anywhere from $30 to $50 a month, and you can get internet, and everybody uses internet these days. Off-gridders use internet a lot because a lot of times there aren't any stores or anything where we live, and so a lot of stuff that we have to order, and yes, off-gridders do have to buy stuff. We don't produce it all on our own homesteads, especially stuff like clothing and stuff like that. I don't know of any off-gridders that produce their own clothing. There might be some out there, but I don't know about them. So we use internet. We go on to Amazon and Walmart and we order stuff and just have it brought directly to us. And you know, it's a lot cheaper in most cases than it would be for us to drive many, many miles to a store for an off-gridder to go find stuff that we may need. And a lot of stuff, it, the local stores don't carry. Okay. So you can get a landline and you can get internet and you can get phone service through them. And uh, you may also have, now a lot of places are putting in fiber optics boxes. You may see these in your area. I just got one put out here uh, about two years ago. They put a fiber optics box out next to my place here. I didn't hook up to it because it's expensive. Uh, but uh, I don't exactly know how much it costs a month. But it is very good uh, for internet and you can use it for phone service too. So fiber optics. Another option you can use is uh, cable. Uh, some people, if you have uh, power lines next to your property, you might be able to get hooked up to cable. And a cable, you can do internet, and uh, t you can get your TV and all that sort of stuff over your cable lines. Uh, <clears throat> the other options, if you don't have that, you, you've all been hearing probably about broadband. Now, broadband is, ju is, isn't just one service. It actually applies to a number of different services that all use uh, the satellite connections for broadband. And there is DSL, there is uh, cell phone, there is uh, fiber optics, there is uh, some other services that also use the broadband system. Now, all of you are probably familiar with cell phones by now, I expect, okay? And uh, if you use a cell phone, if when you get start looking at your property, take your cell phone with you and make sure that it will work on your property. You may only get one or two bars, but that may be enough at least for basic communication. And if you have a cell phone, you can also get 
internet uh, if you want to use the a service uh, internet service uh, dongle or something like that and I'm going to talk about that right now so when I first went off grid uh, they they didn't have a lot of cell phone service even in the area here and I just got a cheap track phone uh, and use that for a while. It was a pay for you go pay as you go phone, and those phones didn't even have internet on them. All you had it was just a phone. That's all it was. And instead of getting a landline put in because it was cheaper, and I could just pay, I was paying like fifteen dollars a month or something for a track phone. Then I started a business. I started doing pest control, and I needed to be able to contact my customers all the time. And uh, so I needed a better phone than what the track phone would give at that time. And so I just got. One of these flip phones. Some of you guys may still have some of these. These are great old phones. This one here is called a tank. And believe me, it has been through a lot of rough drops and falls. I even dropped this into a ditch and managed to dig it out. Thought, oh no, I've ruined my phone. I shook all the water out of it, dried it all out. And this thing has now been working for over 10 years. And it's been a great little phone. And this does have the internet on it. But I never use the internet on it. Because that uses up all your minutes really fast if you do that. Okay, so I just never use the internet on it. But for phones and taking care of my business, these old flip phones, they were great. Worked excellent. But the problem was that I ran into is when I started making uh, videos uh, for YouTube and that, there's no way to transfer the files through, through this phone in order to do that. However, I switched over to uh, a service company that also provided a uh, internet dongle and that's what some of you may still use these they're kind of being phased out this is an internet dongle and what it is, is it's basically a mini cell phone and it has a USB port on it put this down here it has a USB uh, plug on it that you just plug into the USB port on your computer and then you download the uh, program that goes with it and you use that for Wi-Fi now these are generally only about 3G which is a fairly slow speed and it was uh, it it worked fine. It's I've used it like I said for about ten years, uh, but uploading videos became really slow. Now I'm not so sure that it's the the dongle or, or the company that I was with, and I won't name them. But the company I was with was throttling our internet to, uh, to slow it down for anybody that was using a lot of uploads or downloads. So if I uploaded a video, it might take me six hours using the dongle to upload a video. Now for other things, for just uh, watching a video on YouTube. It worked pretty good. If I was trying to watch a stream of movie, it would sometimes pause on me. The biggest problem I had with the dongle was, though, that sometimes the internet would just cut out because it, it it has a signal that is not very strong. And so sometimes the signal would cut out, and I'd have to unplug the thing from my computer and then plug it back in. Well, that's really hard on this USB port, and it's really hard on the computer USB port. And so I actually wore out one computer doing that and I also wore out a couple of these dongles and had to buy new ones they're starting to phase these out I think probably for that reason is they're just not uh, the best design system for that now I'm going to show you another box that I use right now uh, that is uh, made by Franklin I don't have to plug it into my computer but it basically works the same way and I'll show you that in just a minute but let me talk about some of the other services that you may be able to get uh, if you can get on uh, like I said if you can get on cable uh, that's fairly a fairly good uh, speed for internet, and you know that'll probably cost you. Depends on what you get with cable, whether you get your TV and your other uh, things that you want to go along with it. You're going to spend anywhere from fifty to hundred bucks a month, maybe even more for some of the packages. Uh, if you want to get the uh, uh, the fiber optic and stuff like that, I don't know what the cost is on those. I didn't hook up to mine. They're available. I've heard that the speed is really good though on fiber optic. If you can get onto fiber optic. We already talked about landline. Of course, your cell phone you can use. And my cell phone, <laughs> my cell phone is being used as a camera right now. I just got this cell phone. Uh, and it is, again, I went back to track phone because I like the pay as you go. When I was running a business, I needed to have uh, calls all the time. I was con constantly communicating uh, with my customers. And so I needed a uh, larger minute plan but since I retired now I don't need that many minutes and so I'm back to a track phone however the phone that I got is a really nice one it's a uh, Motorola uh, Android phone I got it for $39 and I just got a uh, one-year plan with 400 minutes for a hundred dollars and so it's cost me about eight bucks a month eight dollars a month and this phone has really good internet connections all just like a computer you all know how they work 
And so I can connect, because I have my own Wi-Fi hotspot, which I'll show you here in a minute, I can connect my Android phone directly to my own Wi-Fi hotspot and use internet on my phone. So if I'm away from my computer and I need to do business on my phone, for some reason, or, I, or if my computer happens to crash on me, or I just want to use it without having to be plugged in, then I can use the phone and also use that. And you can use it on any public uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. So like at your McDonald's and your restaurants and businesses that have a free public Wi-Fi, you can use the phone and still not and not have to use any of your minutes plans. So that's a really good deal there. Eight bucks a month for that. And then I only pay $70 a month for my uh, hotspot Wi-Fi connection, and my my Wi-Fi is unlimited, uh, 4G LTE, which is a lot faster than the old 3G that I used to have, and uh, it uploads, I can upload a full uh, long video up to YouTube in less than 10 minutes now, where it used to take me six hours using the 3G dongle, okay, that's how bad it was. So that's really nice. It also has a really nice camera, and that's what I'm using right now to record this because I wanted to test this video camera because I'm going to be using this to do more videos since my old camera was crap. And some of you know it. Uh, the sound on it wasn't very good. So this has a lot better sound, and I think a lot better picture. Now, some of the other services we're going to talk about. Now, some of the other uh, services, communication services that you can look into <coughs> is satellite. <coughs> and uh, quite a few off-gridders use satellite. Uh, because uh, if you're too far away from a cell phone tower that you can get a, that you can't get a signal, satellite's probably your next best option. And with satellite, uh, as long as you're not into a valley where you can't see get a line of sight to a satellite that's up in the sky, then satellite works really well. Uh, the speeds I I have heard and and have seen are a little bit slower than a cell phone tower 4G LTE but still enough that you can still stream videos and upload and download and you can communicate, keep in communication with your family. Now, that will also work for a phone if you get a VOIP, a VoIP uh, phone uh, system. You can get these, you can just download them online. And what you do is uh, it transfers, it, it, it acts like it's, it's uh, it transfers the voice to data and then transfers it over to the satellite and then it, converts it back to voice. So it's a little bit slower. A little bit that's the only thing you need to know if you're using it for phone service, a little bit slower because it has to make that transfer that that uh, the other systems tend to do a lot faster. But other than that, it still works fine for internet uh and still works fine for, you know, keeping in uh, communication with your family and if you get the satellite package, a lot of them also come with your movies and TV and all that other stuff that you can get through satellite. Now, there's a couple of different services that I'm aware of, and a new one that I'm going to talk about. There is, uh, I got to look here, one of them is called Vias, Viasat, and uh, we don't have Viasat in this area. Uh, the other one is called HughesNet. HughesNet is in this area, and HughesNet is, is probably a, a large company because it seems to be in a lot of different places. Uh, and the average costs on uh, the HughesNet and the Viasat are anywhere from $50 to $150, depending on how much speed you get. And uh, you can also, you have to get the pack, the uh, uh, equipment that goes with it. And the satellite dish and the, uh, the communication box uh, will cost you anywhere from $300 to $500 on those systems. Okay, but once you buy the equipment, you own the equipment, and then you pay the monthly fee, which is anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars, and that takes care of your uh, internet for that. And you can use the VoIP for phone calls, so you can still use it for phone calls and internet. So you know it's it's a little bit on the pricey side, but not too bad uh, if you and you need communication of some type. And a lot of people swear by satellite. A lot of people are using satellite. The newest one that's coming out now uh, is from uh, Starlink which you all know Elon Musk, right? Okay, he's into everything. Well, now he's got his fingers into satellite uh, internet service called Starlink, but it is still really new and still in the testing phases. So I don't know that you want to get involved with it until it's been a little bit more expanded and, and made sure this works. I checked on the price on that, and they're offering a package. I think it's $100 a month and about $500 for the equipment, satellite equipment. May not be available in all areas because they're still putting the satellites up for directly for Starlink. And uh, so you may want to wait or check to make sure that's available in your area before you use that. Satellites, good service, a little bit more on the pricey side, might be sporadic. Make sure that you're, if you're 
uh, in on an area, if you're in an open area where you're off gridding, shouldn't be any problem finding a satellite. If you're in a valley, uh, you want to make sure that you've got at least line of sight to where the satellite is, and you may not be able to get any connection. Same's true for cell phones, you know that. That's why your cell phones go out when you go into a canyon sometimes. Okay. Uh, the other services, these are not as common, but there are still some off bidders that are using them. Uh, one is CB radios, and CB radio is still available. You can still get on them. However, uh, because of it's used for other different types of communications, it's getting harder and harder to find a frequency where you can talk to somebody. CB radios are good, and I had one when I was a teenager in my truck. I used to talk to all my buddies on a CB radio. But it, the range on a CB radio is anywhere from maybe 3 to 12 miles. If you've got one of the really, really tall, good antennas and maybe a booster, you might get up to 20 miles on a CB radio, uh, but they're basically for local communication with other CB radio users. They're not just for talking to anybody out there. The other person has to have a CB and they, they might want to, not want to talk to you. If you're going to be using CB, you also need to know the lingo because there is some legal uh, verbs, verbo verbology that they use that is very necessary when you're talking on CB you and get yourself in trouble if you don't. And so, get you a book on CB and study how to use CB if you want to do that. The other one is ham radio. Now, I've never used a ham radio, but I've seen them, and they're really cool. I like them. Um, a lot of survivalists use ham radio because they want to, in the event, uh, ham radio is used for military, uh, all the different military services, and some of the police services use a ham radio system. Uh, because if the grid in that went down, uh, ham radios don't operate on the same system. They use a radio frequency, and so survivalists believe that ham radios may still be able to operate when other cell phone towers and other things like that, if something was to happen and everything collapsed, they believe that ham radios may still be able to operate. I don't know, but, you know, they are pretty cool. But in order to run a, a ham radio station, again, you have to have somebody on the other end with a ham radio station uh, that will talk to you, and you also have to have a uh, license in order to operate a ham radio. You can get a basic license. You can even go online and take the test and get your license that way. And uh, a lot of hobbyists out there do ham radio because uh, you, you can even contact people in other countries and talk to them. And so ham radio is an option, but it's not like a, a first option for people who've never used one before. But it might be something you may want to consider. Okay, so those are the basic uh, communication systems. There may be some communication systems out there I'm not aware of, but uh, you, you, you know, you can go online and you can do a little bit, bit more investigating. And, uh, if you're, like I said, if you're looking for land, uh, you want to make sure you have some type of communication and generally internet because we all use internet these days. Everybody spends most of their time on the internet these days, it seems. I spend a lot of time on there because I run a business online. And so I, and I communicate with my family, I communicate with my son, my family, I do most of my, a lot of my shopping, I do a lot of my business with banks and things like that, I have a PayPal account, so those are things that a lot of us use nowadays, and you know, a lot of people say, well, you're, that's so technical, I thought you were off-grid and you were, you were, you were simplifying your life, yeah, but you know what, if I can buy stuff, uh, that I really need at my homestead without having to run a town that simply that simplifies my life okay and it is technical but you know even old Thoreau uh, he had to use a printing press to print his books so you know they're they're still they were still technical people now if you want to go completely off grid without any of these technical services and these communication services I would just say be really careful Okay, you need some type of communication, even if it's just a cell phone that you never use, you keep in a drawer and you charge it up once in a while. But if you ever have an emergency, you better have some type of communication. Okay, so this is what I use now in, in place of that dongle. Uh, and it still works basically the same way. What it is is a, a box that basically acts like a cell phone to communicate with the tower. However, this one is 4G LTE. Uh, which is about as fast as you can get now until they come out with 5G services, which they probably will eventually. But you get 4G LTE, and this is this is a, a speedy little uh, system here. I can uh, upload the same videos. It used to take me six hours on the dongle. I can upload in about 10 minutes now uh, using this system. And uh, this system here, I got uh, locally through our uh, local company. But you can get these Franklins or a, a similar service through a lot of the uh, yeah, companies that also handle your phone service. And what they are, this is unlimited uh, 
I got the unlimited plan. That's it comes with the unlimited plan uh, for about seventy dollars a month. Uh, good internet speed, four G LTE, and it just plugs in. It can either be plugged into a one ten volt outlet like this, or it can be plugged into your computer just like the dongle does with the USB cord. You just unhook the USB from here and plug that into your computer, or it has a battery. And so it, it's completely remote. You can take this with you. You see, it's actually running right now. This is, My internet is running off of this on my computer right now with this little blue light flashing right here. It's just running off of the battery. And it has a good long battery, uh, about six, eight hours of battery time uh, for running uh, internet. And uh, it, you just unplug it and you can set it anywhere and use, use it. And it is a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, so it, I can actually connect uh, up to five devices. And I have three computers hooked up to this. And my uh, phone hooked up to this, uh, connected to the this system, and so I can use internet from any of those using this same system here. So that's pretty good. Uh, Seventy bucks a month unlimited is, is is a pretty decent price, and that takes care of my internet. And I use internet all the time. Like I said, I'm on the computer handling business, taking care of customers, making videos, and I run a couple of subs where I answer people's questions and things like that. So. These these have replaced the dongle, I think, for a lot of people. And uh, you can check on those. This is the Franklin. They may have some different makes or models out there. I don't know for sure. Uh, check with your phone companies, and they can probably tell you what's available in these systems. All right, that's what I'm using right now for my Internet. And uh, I like I said, I've got cell phone uh, for $8 a month, and I've got uh, Wi-Fi for about $70 a month. So, so figure $80 a month for my Internet. <clears throat> and I watch movies and I can get TV channels and get everything off the internet so that and radio so almost all of the things that I used to have different uh, equipment for I can just do off the internet and I think that's how most people are now okay and you if you use the uh, the the connections that are available the Wi-Fi connections you can run printers and and uh, stereo equipment and everything else right off of your your uh, internet uh, connection to your computer now so you know your Bluetooth that's what I was trying to think of you can use Bluetooth now and connect to so many different devices that you have like this thing up here you can see up here that's a Bluetooth speaker that I use from my computer when I want to listen to the music or movies in full stereo then I, I just connect it to the Bluetooth so you know <clears throat> off-gridders at least me I'm not uh, you know techno techno technologically illiterate uh, even though I used to use a flip phone for a long time, I even used a brick phone, and I remember when there were no cell phones. Yeah, so, so some of you may not even be that old. I know. So you know, we used to have two tin cans tied with strings sometimes too. I'm just joking. All right. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, you can go by by my website, simpsolarhomesteading.com. And I just put up some. Uh, I've got some really neat new plans, cabin plans, off grid cabin plans on there that you might want to take a look at. Uh, I've got the Walden on there that is a nice 8 by 12 with an addition. Uh, these are smaller cabin plans. I've got a studio plans. That's a 10 by 10 that anybody can build. Really nice cabin plans. And I just put up a brand new design for a cabin on wheels, which I call the Big Tex, which is a house on wheels and it can be modified. It's either an 8 by 14, 8 by 16, or 8 by 18. You can modify it. Go look at those. And the SketchUp plans are included with the uh, uh, big text plans and you can always come by I do hope you will subscribe and like my uh, videos and share them on your social networks so that you that you know people will come and watch these videos because there's a lot of people out there that are doing off good videos nowadays a lot of them started out uh, watching my videos went and built their old homesteads and then started making their own videos that's okay okay we like the, the uh, sharing the communications and that but sometimes they forget about they forbid, forget about old solar cabin. So you come back and watch my videos, folks, and know that uh, I've got you back. And, you know, we, uh, we go off grid and uh, we live a simple life to survive in the bad times and thrive in the good times. All right, folks, have a great day.